we flourished, grown every year since. And actually, when I uh, met Chad about three or four months ago, I thought the perfect pair would be horse racing and bourbon. And I think that's kind of why we're here today. This has been an exciting week of getting new podcasts in the queue. Mark your calendars for Sunday, September 11th at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard. We're going to be hosting the first ever Bourbon Community Roundtable on YouTube Live. Our guests include past guests and bloggers such as Blake from Bourboner.com, the fellows from BreakingBourbon.com, and Carrie from Suburbia.com. YouTube Live allows you, the viewer, to watch and ask questions live during the recording. We have a small agenda set, but we'll be posing questions to the audience, such as the craziest bourbon trades you've witnessed and thoughts on the new antique collection press release. This is going to be a really fun event, and sorry ahead of time for all those Patriots and Cardinal fans out there. The link to view it will be shared on our Facebook and Twitter accounts, so make sure you're following us. As always, remember to support the show on Patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Bourbon Pursuit. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. Play Whiskey Wednesday Round 11, the memory game. Until June 26, each week you can win one of our 12 incredible grand prizes. Select two doors at checkout, and if they match on drawing night, you'll win that bottle. Not a match? No worries. You still score a Weller 12-year. Every $5 ticket gives you five chances to win, including four weekly bonus prizes. Get your tickets now at give270.org. Charitable Gaming License ORG 0002703. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to NoseYourBourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single-barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. Welcome back to the episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast. Kenny and Ryan here tonight, and we are doing something pretty awesome tonight. I, I think this is a this is a first time for us. So tonight we are doing kind of it's an experimentation. We're doing a YouTube live broadcast. Now it's a it's a broadcast in the fact that what we want to do is we might in, end up making this uh, I don't know want to say a regular thing, but something where we might do like a roundtable, getting a few individuals involved, and and bringing more of a community aspect to it. But what it does is allows people to come in and ask questions as we're actually podcasting and doing this at the same exact time. So right now we have uh, a single one viewer and, and we actually sent this link out on Patreon earlier. So if you didn't get this link as of three hours ago, then I'm sorry that you're not on here. But uh, 
Ryan, uh, what do you think about uh, what's going on in, in the bourbon world right now? And because right now we've got Kentucky Bourbon Festival coming up next week too. And it's, it's where is it where's it at? Because I think you want to tell all the listeners where it's at. <laughs> well, first of all, this is this Google Hangout. It's kind of awkward wa- talking to you with a big microphone in your face, um, looking at a cell phone. But uh, no, this is very cool. Uh, no, Bourbon Festival's in Bardstown, obviously, uh, where I'm from. It's a, a week long event with tons of offerings of, you know, with all the master distillers, all the different people that make the bourbon industry happen. So I'm excited that we are going to be able to attend it in some of the events and uh, really excited about it. Yeah, me too, because I think this is actually, it's finally where like, I, I, I feel like we, uh, you know, we send a te- text messages all the time. We're like, oh my God, did we finally make it? Right. Like, yeah. we're, we're getting media tickets to things, right? Yeah, it's, it's finally paying off. Uh, we're, we're we're not making any money, but we're finally getting tickets and uh, get to hang out at cool places. Yeah, I think uh, I think one of the cool things that we're both excited for, and it was funny because actually this past weekend, uh, I was talking to Ryan before we were getting ready to leave for the weekend for the Labor Day weekend, and then he's like, "Hey, what are you doing this weekend?" I was like, "Oh, I have to go to Michigan," but then we have to go to IKEA, and he was like, "That's weird. I'm gonna I'm actually have to go to IKEA on Sunday too." And then oddly enough, we saw each other at IKEA. <laughs> yeah. And our, and our wives are what? And by the way, for anybody that doesn't know, the closest IKEA is about what two two hours, two and a half hours away from Louisville. Yeah, it's a solid two hours. It's not close yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we go there and then our wives are like, uh, oh, you going to this thing on this gala on Saturday? And your wife was like, yeah, it's going to be okay. And I'm trying to get out of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, it's going to be really cool. It's what uh, I think what's one of the cool things about this. Like this, they have this gala on Saturday night. It's just, uh, you know, I guess rubbing shoulders, all the big names of the bourbon industry, apparently. Yeah. And I guess we're part of them. So uh People be rubbing shoulders with us. Yeah, I know. (laughs) So let's go ahead and we'll introduce our guest today. So today we have a a very interesting duo. So we're we're actually introducing two people as our guests today. So we have uh, not only that, it's one's actually not even in the bourbon industry, but it's a it's a pretty compelling story on what they're going to be talking about. So first we have Chad Butters. Chad is the co-founder and CEO of Eight Oaks, uh, which is a distillery, and I'll let him talk more about that. And then we also have Vince Roth, and Vince is the managing partner of Final Furlong Racing Stables. So gentlemen, welcome to the show tonight. Hey, thanks guys. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Vince, I'm going to start with you. So kind of give us the background on uh, you and what is Final Furlong Racing Stables. Sure. Final Furlong is a uh, horse racing syndicate. Uh, what we do is we purchase racehorses at auction or privately, and we put together um, basically an LLC that owns each individual horse, and we allow people to buy in for as low as 3% up to 10% of each individual offering. Uh, we started Final Furlong probably about six years ago. Um, we we're just shy of a million dollars in purse earnings. I think our next race should get us there. Um, and about three or four months ago, I was introduced to that, um, after reading a great article on him, which was published in the uh, LeBeau Business from Drexel University uh, magazine. And we both actually attended LeBeau. And I reached out to him with an idea that I had about a year ago where for our next offering, I thought it would make a lot of sense to pair one of the horses we had in our offering with a barrel of bourbon. And when I read Chad's story about Eight Oaks and their craft distillery and what they were doing, um, I thought it was just a, a match made in heaven. So for our newest pair of offerings, which you can see at FinalForLongRacingStable.com, um, for individuals that buy into either horse, they get a share of Chad's barrel of bourbon. Okay, well, let's let's not spill the beans too much here, right? We want to talk about a little bit more, <laughs> a little more in depth. But uh, so, so uh, Chad, kind of talk us a little bit more about about Eight Oaks here. You bet. So, Eight Oaks is a craft distillery that we started up uh, back in January. Uh, I was previously military, so uh, I just retired in August of 2015. Uh, after 25 years of doing that, my wife and I had a conversation about you know what it was we wanted to do with our lives to make ourselves happy, and uh, we came up with a list of a few things. One of them was start a family business. One of them was do something with agriculture, work together with friends and family every day and be home every night and or near every night anyway. And uh, so what ended up kind of checking the blocks on that list was, uh, as we looked around, was craft distilling. 
Uh, so we hopped into some research and development on that over the past three years, I guess. Went to Michigan State University and Cornell University. They both have workshops for this and then did a, uh, a internship with a place called Dry Fly Distilling out in Washington State. Uh, and then launched this in, in January. We're a farm distillery growing all our own grains, corn, wheat, rye, barley. Uh, and we turn that into bourbon and rye whiskey and vodka and gin. We also do a rum and an apple jack. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun so far. So first, uh, Chad, I want to say thank you for your service. Absolutely. I think everybody appreciates it. Yeah, uh, so I guess, yeah, and can I talk a little bit more about, about what you're doing there at Eight Oaks? Like what makes it a little bit more unique compared to anybody else? And, and by the way, give us uh, a little bit of background about uh, where you are and actually like the location of where you're distilling is to, as well. Yeah, sure. So we're in a place called Nutripoli, Pennsylvania. It's in the Lehigh Valley uh, area, of southeastern Pennsylvania. Um, a very rural uh, area, but uh, but also really perfect for what we're doing. Uh, the soil is great for growing things like uh, wheat and corn and rye and barley. Uh, we're actually growing a two-row barley right now that we're going to you know, sneak in uh, some sort of scotch style uh, whiskey as we go. Um, but, but really that's, you know, that's, that's kind of how we got started in all this is we, uh, we just took some time to, to think about what it was that we wanted to do. And, and we selected this area of Pennsylvania because it's a perfect spot for it. Was it, I got a, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead, Ryan. Well, I was going to just ask a question about the curriculum, I guess, to the Michigan State and Cornell programs. Yeah. What, what kind of program is it? How long is it? And like, yeah. how did you find out about it? Yeah, those are those are workshops, basically, that last just a few days. Uh, so it could be, you know, four or five days. Uh, most of it is very academic. Uh, Cornell's, uh, they host at a, at a local distillery. So that was at Catskill Distilling in New York State. Um, and, and really what it is, is the manufacturer, uh, still manufacturer called Carl out of Germany kind of works with Cornell, uh, and then brings in a bunch of potential distillers, uh, and, and has conversations about academically, you know, what it takes to, you know, do a mash and to do fermentation and, and distillation techniques and procedures and, um, you know, yields of certain grains and things like that. So much more academic in nature. Um, Michigan State's the same way. They have their own little off-campus distillery that is kind of associated with Michigan State. It's, it's taught by a guy named Dr. Carl Berglund. Uh, and again, very, very academic in nature. Uh, a little bit of hands-on there, but not a whole lot. Uh, and then the dry fly distilling course is about a week-long course, and that's where you actually go out to dry fly and you work. Uh, you pay them a lot of money to work for them, which is a sweet <laughs> gift if you can get it. Yeah. Perfect for them. Uh, yeah, it works out really well. Actually, they're great guys, uh, and they teach you a lot in those few days. And it's basically a course that will allow you to uh, leave the course understanding whether or not you really want to do this. Um, the rest of it is just very much hands-on with your with you know your equipment that you purchase and that that particular manufacturing rep. Uh, to try to get you as much experience as possible. And then you take off and make a bunch of mistakes. Very cool. Yeah. I guess that's a good question even uh, to kind of go on. Like, so you, you are uh, a craft distiller. We've had, we've had craft distillers on in here before. Uh, talk about what mistakes have you made uh, during this whole process, right? Because, uh, and I guess also give the listeners, you know, you kind of talked about that you make other spirits besides just bourbon. So kind of talk about those just a little bit more in depth if you want to as well. Yeah, sure. I'll go into, you know, kind of our product line and what we're all about if, if we can. Um, like you said, you can edit this in post. Uh, so what we've got is um, we started off with vodka and vodka is one of those spirits that, um, you know, it, it, every distillery is different, as you guys know, uh, especially in the craft world. Uh, there's many distilleries that just want to maybe do volume out of, uh, you know, state stores and, and liquor stores. Uh, other people are trying to build a single individual brand. Um, we really wanted to just be a farm distillery. We want to do very traditional techniques and we want to make everything from scratch. Uh, so vodka was a nice place for us to start. Uh, you know, just, uh, we do it completely from scratch, uh, from the ground up. We planted our wheat, um, let's see, October of 2014 and we harvested the wheat July 6th of 2015. Uh, we keep all the wheat in a barn directly behind the distillery, and then we go grab it 25 bushels at a time. 
uh, bring it up to our mill house and do all the milling fresh right on site. We cook it for about six hours and then we ferment it for four to six days. We do one pot distillation on that and then we do a distillation through a vodka column. We run it through that twice uh, and we get it up to 96% pure alcohol and then uh, proof that down with our local well water down to about 80 proof, which uh, which is you know where we bottle it at. Um, so vodka was a nice start because you know, there does it takes some finesse to get a vodka to a point where it's you know 96% pure alcohol. Um, so we also wanted to have our own tasting room and actually do some really nice craft cocktails in the tasting room. So we needed a kind of a diverse line, you know, of, of vodka and gin and rum and applejack and and whiskeys to kind of go along with all the cocktails that are in the tasting room. And um, so I ran, I ran through a couple other ones there. You know, one of my other favorites to make right now is gin. Uh, gin's a, a really fun place to play because there's not a whole lot of guidelines there. You can do uh, gin with just about anything, of course, as long as it's majority juniper. So we do our gin exactly the same way as we do our vodka. We do uh, the exact same technique, just at the very end of the distillation. We do one more uh, distillation with botanicals, that, and we personally use rosemary and, and lemongrass and coriander and juniper, of course, and orange peel and forest root. And that makes up our botanical load. We put that in cheesecloth. It's all fresh ingredients. We put that in the top of the still, and we do a vapor extraction on that last distillation to make our gin. Uh, we do a rum just because I really, really like rum. So uh, <laughs> we, we, do, we do a rum. Uh, that We don't grow our own sugar cane here. That's uh, sourced from a place in, in Lancaster called um, Golden, no, excuse me, Golden Barrel Foods. Uh, so they, that's where we source our molasses. Uh, and we do a very traditional kind of molasses water yeast wash uh, for our rum. And, and we're also aging that rum and use bourbon barrels to do a naturally aged and spiced rum. Uh, and then Applejack is probably the thing I'm actually most um, kind of, uh, it's my favorite topic to talk about. It's the original American spirit. So before rye whiskey and before bourbon, this is what our forefathers had. So uh, Applejack is what people drank before those other spirits were, were known. So uh, around here in this area of the country where I am, uh, it's a very uh, historical drink, and we're, we're proud to be part of bringing that back. That's made with 100% apple cider. Uh, that's fresh pressed for us by a local orchard up here. There's no pasteurization or additives or anything else. It's just fresh cider that's pressed. Uh, we ferment that for about six days, turn it to hard apple cider, and then we do a double distillation on that. Um, we're also aging that Applejack as well. Uh, and we're aging the rum in used bourbon barrels, and we're going to do a spice rum with some vanilla beans and orange peel and local honey and a little bit of black pepper uh, and make a really nice naturally aged spice rum. So, yeah, a few different products going on while the bourbon and the, the rye are, are patiently aging. Get some cash flow in there. Uh, you got it. <laughs> That's kind of the way it has to work, all right? All about fancy bills. Uh, you know, and for us, you know, again, each distillery is, is slightly different. Um, and, and everybody's got unique approaches to it, which is great. That's what's wonderful about this, this uh, industry. Uh, we've chosen to go with 53-gallon barrels and do it a very traditional way. Fill up the big barrels and let them sit for a year and a half or two years. And, and we'll see where we are, you know, in another, in another year here. Right. It's all about experimentation, making until you find you figure out that, that magic, that magic quadrant, that magic number, whatever it takes to, uh, to finally get the, uh, to get it where you want it to be. Right. Yeah, it really is. And, and you, you talked about mistakes and, and, and our, our biggest mistake so far, as far as distillations, of course, we've made many, many other, but specific to distillation was, um, was just losing, you know, a fermentation. Uh, just because we weren't really familiar with uh, milling and mashing in in a very direct way with an auger and some of the the equipment that's being used and and if you don't you know keep that equipment very clean and there, there's sneaky spots where it can get a little bit dirty uh, and if you get you know if it gets it all dirty then obviously bacteria gets in your in your fermentation and and then you lose the fermentation so we have lost one of those so you know we scratch that up to uh, to living and learning. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point of sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. 
And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award winning 24 7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon, the farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus Magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. So Chad, we're going to give you a break. We're going we're to take it over to Vince now. So Vince, give us a... Uh, Again, talk about the ponies. Yeah, let's really let's let's, let's probably talk want to hear about, about it, right? I'm happy to because I think that's it's kind of a I, Ryan. Maybe you haven't been uh, you know introduced to it. I mean, I know I have. I've had friends that they've they've said, "Hey, do you want to go in and, and buy a horse with us?" And every oh, time yeah. I, I said, "Are you crazy?" Because <laughs> it's like it's just like oh, let's just pay a lot of money to baby this thing and like hope it it ends up like winning a race, right? So I've always I've always been so hesitant about doing it. Ryan, have you ever have you actually bitten that bullet and done it? Not yet, but uh, I'm starting to need more write offs, so uh, a horse <laughs> might be uh, the way to go. Future. Yeah, but I think what the way they're doing it's pretty cool. The the what I was briefly reading about on their website, you know, the, the sharing or whatever, I think that's a good idea. So I'd, I'd like for him to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. So Vince, dive, dive a lot deeper into it. Yeah, no problem. And, and, and to your point, I mean, it costs the same amount of money to feed Smarty Jones that does to feed a horse that's never going to never going to win a race. So if your friend's saying, let's just jump in, you, you probably need a little bit more of a strategic uh, a way of doing so. Um, right. But basically, I mean, that, that, that's what we do. I mean, we, we tried currently to focus on New York bred horses. I know you guys are in Kentucky and the Kentucky sires. I mean, that's typically the way to go, but the, the purse incentives now for New York bred horses through the New York circuit has really started to make a lot of sense. Um, the New York bred horses that do have Kentucky sires have been throwing phenomenal race horses. Um, so what we, we try to do is we, we search for sales that either are in Kentucky or in Florida or in New York for New York bred horses. Um, the most recent one, there was a sale, the Fasig Tipton sale at Saratoga about three weeks ago. Uh, it's probably about 400 horses on the ground. We inspected every single horse. Um, by inspecting them, that means, you know, we watch them walk. We go through their pedigree. We talk to the consigner. We talk to the breeder. We, um, you know, go through their lines, their muscles, really narrow it down to what we think is going to be a quality racehorse. So from those 400, we got our short list down to about 30. From those 30 to make second inspection, probably about to about 10. From those 10 after vetting, we were down to about four that we wanted to bid on. And from those four, we ended up getting two. So it's a, it's a lot of work to get a, you know, as Chad says, probably to get the perfect barrel of bourbon or or rye or, or vodka or whatever, you really need to, to do your homework first. Um, so what we've done is, you know, we do that once a year, we find one or two horses that we really like, and then we put together a syndication uh, where we break up the the horse and percentages. So if you know if someone's interested in three percent of a horse, they have the ability to purchase three percent of a horse. They have all rights as an owner. <clears throat> they can get an owner's pass in New York, Kentucky, Florida. Be able to go watch the horses work out on the back stretch. Be able to be in the winter circle should their horse win in the paddock while the horse is being saddled. We really compare it to a country club type of membership. Um, as long as you like horse racing. No, that's that's a that's a good way to look at it because I know that my mother-in-law at one point uh, they owned a horse and they always said that the greatest part about it was that oh you got tickets to 
basically every time they were at a racetrack that was just all gratis, right? I mean, it was just like you own part of the horse, you're part of the owner's club. And if by some random chance that your horse, uh, and for everybody that's in Kentucky, whether that horse is running in Oaks or Derby, it doesn't matter if it's actually in the race, but if it's in that day, you get free tickets the, oh, okay. the entire race, right? So it's it's one of those, those uh, granted, it's a, I mean, you can give us a better idea. Like, so give us an idea of a, how many horses are there out there and how many horses actually make it into the Derby or Oaks for that one particular weekend or Belmont stakes or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. the crown. Picture Chad's farm and all the weed on the farm and then pluck one or two of them. And that's probably the chances you have of getting in the dirt <laughs> or winning. There you go. That's what we'll say. The slimmest, um, even slimmest hey. chances of like winning the lottery, right? It's, it's, it's a very uh, small farm. It's a very small farm. Well, I, <laughs> I, I, I like the way you think. And, and that's why we exist because we do have the dream. Um, and as I touched to, you know, the, the goal is to have a really good two year old horse. So if you can have a really good two-year-old horse, that's pretty much when they start their campaign toward the Kentucky Derby that they'll race when they're three. So just Sunday, we had a two-year-old horse named Baltic Sea um, race in Saratoga, which is a very difficult place to win races, and he finished third. Uh, I do believe next time you should do very, very well. If we can get him to win next time or the time after that, he may then step on the trail to the Kentucky Derby. Now, there's still a long road ahead of him, but it all starts with that first race that happened on Sunday. And just hey, I would just take a maiden claimer. I'm 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 not greedy. I'll take a. <laughs> I, to be honest, I have just as much fun watching a seventy-five hundred dollar maiden claiming horse turn for home in the lead as I do for a maiden special weight horse. I mean, it's <laughs> I love the Miami Dolphins for some crazy reason, um, and I always say, you know, I can't afford to buy the Dolphins. I probably never will be able to afford to buy the Dolphins or any other sport franchise for that matter. Uh, but we can't own a horse, and there's no feeling like watching your horse turn for home and, and winning a race, really. Yeah, so talk about the two. I think there's two horses that are paired with the, the Eight Oaks offering, and one of them I'm really excited about because I saw as a colt by Shackelford, and yes. he made me a lot of money in the Preakness and in a Breeders' Cup race. No, you, you, won by a, fast. you won by a nose in that Breeders' Cup, too. I know, exactly. Um, yeah, re- really excited about him. Um, Shackelford's been – been throwing a lot of great horses. He was one of my favorite horses as well during that that campaign. Um, so we've had our eye on 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 his babies for a while. But when we really analyze the pedigree, we really look toward the mother. Uh, that's where we really think that you're going to get the quality. So the dam, the, the Bankers Island is the name of our horse. Um, his mother had five race horses. He's the fifth. The other four already won races. One named the Island Bird. Uh, one about nine. I think she was a hundred thousand dollar yearling purchase, won three times already. Uh, there was another hundred thousand dollar two year old purchase, has won one race in Saratoga. <clears throat> another horse has won three or four times, two hundred thousand dollars in in earnings. Um, so really pairing Shackelford, which I think is an amazing stud, with this dam, I think we might have hopefully struck gold. We'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, he looks phenomenal. Um, and like I, like I teased before, I won't go into it anymore, but you get something a little extra, uh, if you, if you partner on, uh, on him. Well, I think it's about time we, we really dive into that, right? So, <laughs> so kind of, kind of, kind of give, give the folks, you know, we kind of teased a little bit in the very beginning. So, you know, we, we talked about it before I, Ryan and I, we both, you know, we live in Kentucky. It's one of those things that, you know, it's bourbon and horses, you know, you, you know, at some point you're going to be approached to buy a horse and you have to make that decision. But but now you have the opportunity to buy a horse. And it doesn't matter where you live. Right. So kind of talk about uh, a like the options of what you're buying into and B, you know, stipulations or anything like that. Sure. Um, typically, the minimum investment is going to be three percent of the horse. Um, and the reason is, is because that's where you're able to be credentialed with the racing circuit. So that will give you an owner's pass. That will allow you complimentary entry. You'll be able to go back to the backstretch, watch your horses work out. Um, And then the most we'll sell is 10% of any horse because we do want to always retain control. Uh, But with both of these offerings, Shackleford, the Shackleford Colt, who is named Bankers Island, and our Mission Impossible Philly, who is aptly named Eight Oaks, um, you do get a share in Chad's first run uh, barrel of bourbon which we thought was a kind of a neat pairing. So for instance, if you do buy 3% of one of our horses, you're going to get a percent and a half in that barrel 
Um, we're going to, Chad and I will collaborate, come up with some type of neat labeling. And then anyone, you know, is going to be invited to the release party and be able to come and tap their, their bottle of bourbon. So what's a, what's a percent and a half get you then out of a barrel of bourbon? Chad, do you want to go into the uh, the (laughs) barrel? I think you said how many bottles are going to come? Yeah, yeah, percent and a half. Well, basically that barrel of bourbon is going to get you somewhere around 340 bottles. So, you know, we'll know more when we see what kind of angel share we're we're taking, uh, but it should be around 340 bottles. So, you know. Five bottles then or so, right? yeah, Yeah, around five bottles or so. Just about a case. That's pretty good. Just about a case. And those will be... Uh, you know, those bottles will be uh, labeled in a special way for, you know, to commemorate this particular uh, partnership, which it'll be fun. Um, do we, I think we ought to go into a little bit more uh, on some of the other benefits of this as you get to, you'll get to actually. Oh, please come do, down, please do. Yeah, you'll get to come down and actually bottle with us uh, when, when that barrel is ready as part of this whole program that, uh, that Vince has put together. Uh, so it'll be a very much a hands-on thing. As a matter of fact, Vince, I would say that, you know, certainly you guys could come down uh, even way before that and sample <laughs> yeah, that bottle. Uh, and, and you guys tell me when it's done. Uh, so there's there's a lot of things that we can do, um, you know, to kind of make this a much more interactive and fun uh, time with this, with this particular barrel of bourbon. Yeah, it's going to be great. You know, it's something we're looking to potentially continue to do going forward as well. Um, you know, once, once Chad gets massive distribution, it becomes too big for us. Hopefully remember that. <laughs> we're still around, but, uh, you know, we intend to do some, you know, some, some neat, maybe cigar and bourbon parties out in Saratoga next summer. Uh, maybe something up around the Kentucky Derby out by you guys. So there, there's a lot in the works, you know, coming forward. And we've had a ton of interest in this offering already. Um, and everybody's basically asking us, how did nobody think of this before? And honestly, I have no idea how no one thought of this. I don't think I'm smart or thinking of it. Maybe I'm lucky. I just figured, you know what? These two things go together, and uh, maybe we should do something here. And I'm glad we, uh, we ran into each other. I think you're totally right because, uh, I mean, we, we've looked at the stats, right? We have a great listenership of, of people that are the Northeast. So I think this is this is something that would be totally up their alley, especially for those people that are going to bed on Saratoga, the people that are, you know, drinking bourbon up there in New York City and everything like that. So I, I totally think that you guys have, have hit on a, a pretty good sweet spot here, right? Because, you know, it's it's one thing to, to go ahead and invest in a horse and then see zero return, right? Because sometimes that's just what happens, right? It's 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 kind of like the stock market, but it's it's a little bit more fun than that, right? Because it's a it's a living thing that you can actually go and see and watch and happen. And it's just not a, a a ticker on a graph, right? So it's actually it's actually pretty something exciting to see. And not only that is uh you it, at the worst case scenario, at least you get five bottles of bourbon out of it. With your name on it. <laughs> you can drown your sorrows in uh you know on a horse that didn't work out. So talk a little more about the future of this program, right? You kind of hinted at maybe some, some other things with cigars or any other things. Uh, you know, what other, what other kind of things could you possibly think about uh, extending this for, for future endeavors, right? Because right now you've got two horses into it. Um, if, you, if all of a sudden you get the bourbon pursuit bump and you get uh, 9,000 9, people that want to go ahead and buy into it, which we'd like to think it's going to happen, it might not. But, uh, you know, is there more horses and all these things that want to come in, in future partnership endeavors? Uh, I'd like to think so, of course. I mean, that'll be up to Chad as well. Um, But, you know, it's going to be a process to get that next horse. You know, we would never just say, well, we have, you know, 50 people now on the the docket to make an investment. Let's get a horse out there. We're going to wait until we find the right horse for those people. Um, But like I said, we typically buy one or two a year uh, that we'll have available for the following year. So, Right now, it's Bankers Island and Eight Oaks. Um, maybe we'll add one more come November. I'm not sure on that. Um, if not, it'll have to wait then until uh, to early next year. Cool. And so, Chad, I guess give us a little bit more about the future of Eight Oaks, right? Because right now you're you're you've got your your four lines of product that's out there. Um, you've got a bourbon that's going to be coming out here, as we said, it's about the same time as a, a yearling comes to fruition and is able to start racing. Uh, so kind of talk about the future of what your operation is going to be like and, and what people out of Pennsylvania can start expecting out of you as well. Sure, sure. Well, we, we really do want to stay true to the roots of, of craft distilling. I mean, this is this is a second career for me. It's something that we started to uh, 
you know, to get my kids involved. I'm lucky enough to work with both my kids and my wife every day now. Uh, and, and so really that's what this is meant to be. We aren't uh, looking to be the next Jim Beam. We're just looking to, uh, to produce some really quality spirits and, and do it in a, you know, with a nod towards history. One of the things I absolutely love about craft distilling is there's this, it's this really wonderful confluence of history and, and, you know, art and science and, uh, and agriculture, and it all kind of comes together in, in craft distilling. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and what we want to do is just uh, continue to stay true to, you know, being authentic about how we do this. Uh, certainly, we're going to be releasing more products. We have a, a rye whiskey that we've just, um, you know, tapped in with a couple of little port stakes from a local winery that does a wonderful port. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that we can do. And we really want to try to maximize the ability of, of being craft, you know, in the way that uh, we don't have to do, you know, the same thing over and over again. We can do some unique things and take some chances and and try some things out. Um, you know, one of the things we're trying right now is is uh, not to let the cat out of the bag, but it's a completely different spirit that's going to be very much uh, in the same vein as some of these whiskeys, but absolutely made from something that nobody's making anything out of that I know of right now. Uh, so, you know, all these things are very much R&D where we... We try them out on a very small scale. We have a little three liter still that we'll do some distillations on. And then we do a little accelerated age techniques with just some you know, oak sticks that are burnt. Uh, and we'll you know, age it for a week or two just to kind of see the direction that it's heading. And we're getting some really, really interesting results. So I think between the aged Applejack and some of the other aged products that we're, that we're looking at doing, that's really what we want to stay. We want to we stay kind of in that, in that craft, true craft spirit as we go through this. Uh, Chad, talk about first, where can people buy your products if they are looking for, for Eight Oaks products? Yeah, I appreciate that question. So uh, actually, we're distributed in about 30 states now online with a company called Ezra's.com that you guys are probably familiar with. Uh, but you can access that right off our website. So if you go to our website, EightOaksDistillers.com, and certainly follow us on Facebook and we'll keep you posted on the, you know, the, the latest and greatest. But uh, Ezra is, is a way that you can get, you know, um, our product in 30 states and D.C. right now. Uh, so that's one way to get it. We'll ship it directly to your door. Um, the other thing is right at the distillery, of course, in, in Nutripoli. Our distillery is very much a destination. Uh, we, are, we built it here because we wanted to be closest to the source. We have wonderful uh, well water and we've got great uh, ground for growing. So uh, this is very much a destination where people can come and tour and taste and uh, hang out at the, at the, you know, the tasting room and drink some crab cocktails and things like that. We'll also be going into the Pennsylvania State stores, I think, this week or next week uh, with our Applejack and our gin anyway. So that's coming out um, very, very soon in the Pennsylvania State stores. And we just picked up New Jersey distribution uh, last Wednesday. So our friends in New Jersey will be able to, uh, to pick up our stuff as well. So uh, that's, that's really the main points of distribution right now. Uh, and we're just super excited to be hooked up with Vets and, and Final Furlong and this whole opportunity that this is uh, this has given us. I think it's a very unique, very cool thing to do. And and, and certainly you don't have to worry about us out growing a Final Furlong. We're looking forward to a great long partnership and and hopefully the same will stay true when you've won a couple of Kentucky Derbies. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll toast to that. Yeah, awesome. Cheers. So, uh, Vince, uh, what, no, uh, go ahead, man. What what's the closest major city? I guess you guys are located to, to you know if we wanted somebody wanted to make a day trip out there. Yeah, Philadelphia. Uh, okay. We're about, yeah, we're about an hour and twenty from Philadelphia, about an hour and a half from New York City. Um, so it, it's super easy to get to, and uh, and there's other craft distilleries, of course, as you guys know, they're popping up all over the place. But what I love about this industry is everybody is unique. There are definitely. You know, even though they may be doing a vodka or a gin or similar products, everybody's doing it in a very unique way. So, um, it, you know, every one of them is fun to go to, check out, try, sample, see if you like it, whatever. There's there's several of them that have popped up here in the Lehigh Valley uh, and certainly many, many more within the state of Pennsylvania and, and the state of New York as well. As you guys are probably well aware of, New York State has some exceptionally good uh, craft distilleries that are doing really wonderful stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I'd encourage people to just, you know, get on the Google machine there and, and see what's around them and go not just to Eight Oaks, but go to these other craft distilleries that are offering up some really great products and try them out. 
And then Vince, we're going to push over to you to help close us out. So uh, kind of give us some some idea of a uh, where do you go to learn more about uh, Final Furlongs Racing? And uh, where also do you learn more about getting a part of this whole barrel share, if you will? Yeah, sure. I mean, you could definitely follow pretty active. Our social media team's pretty active on Twitter um, at Go Final Furlong. Uh, that's where we have all of our updates. Um, but all the information is basically on our website at finalfurlongracingstable.com. Pretty easy to navigate. Click offerings. Offerings will take you to uh, the Eight Oaks Partnership. Um, it'll explain everything there. Uh, thanks, guys, for coming on. I mean, obviously, two of our favorite things, well, mine at least, is horse racing and bourbon. So, like you said, brilliant idea. I hope to see Final Furlongs in the Churchill program one day, you know, when, so I can bet on you guys. And I, I think the craft distilling thing, it, you know, we, we've grown up around the big guys, you know, so it, I think it's very cool to see these newcomers come and change the game up, you know, and give different offerings that we, we don't always get to experience because we're so used to to the big boys pushing out good stuff. Appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, I think it's uh, it's definitely been a, a good good eye opening experience. I think you guys are onto something really awesome here because, I mean, as Ryan said, horse racing and bourbon it goes hand in hand. There's there's really no better other way to put it because uh, uh, you can't really go to the track without drinking bourbon and you can't really drink bourbon without talking about horses at some point. It, it always it always comes up at some point in you know your conversation, right? So uh, again, I want to say thank you all for coming to the show. Uh, for everybody who got there, make sure you go check out Eight Oaks and also check out Final Furlongs. Uh, make sure you check them out on Twitter, but also make sure you check us out too. So you can also follow us on all those great social media channels. So we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. It's all at Bourbon Pursuit or facebook.com slash Bourbon Pursuit. You can like us on there. Uh, we push all kinds of good content coming out. And if you do like the show, make sure you support us. And thank you for, we're now up to two, uh, we saw the most three viewers online tonight for our Patreon. This is kind of our experiment of actually seeing what's going to happen of getting people to check out this YouTube live experiment. So thank you for all those Patreon people that actually tuned in and watched this live podcast happen. If you want to help support the show and help us continue going on because it def- actually definitely always does help out. So patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash bourbon pursuit. You can learn more about our story and our journey and all our past posts and all of the giveaways that we do on there as well. Uh, so if anybody else has any show suggestions, feedbacks, comments, tell us we suck, tell us we're great. It doesn't matter. You can send us an email. It's the duo, T-H-E-D-U-O at bourbonpursuit.com. We thank you all and we will see you all next week. 